Hello, welcome to another one of Nick's projects. And this time I'm doing something a little bit weird. The ones you've seen in the past will be in vehicles, in my camper van, in my Volvo. This time I'm heading in the bathroom to install a Brookpad Intelligent B-Day toilet seat. Now, most of you will know these as a Japanese toilet, basically. So it's a toilet seat that runs off the mains and your existing plumbing, and it has a control pad on the wall that basically washes your bum for you once you go to the loo. Um, it's a B-Day toilet seat, and um, I had a holiday in Tokyo years ago and I said at the time I thought they were absolutely brilliant and uh, and I've stayed in places like Egypt in the past where they of course have very similar systems um, and it's just brilliant. So I'm going to fit one in my bathroom and I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to start with unboxing this exact unit. Now the model I've chosen is a Splashlet 1300RB. There are some that are more advanced than this but this I think is absolutely more than good enough for the family needs. So the first thing you get in the box is, of course, the toilet seat. Let's get that out. This is, I haven't been in here before and got any of this out yet. So you can see, yes, there's lots of, I don't know whether this is actually manufactured in Japan. Obviously they're very, very popular out there. So this seat fits in place of your existing toilet seat, right? It's just like a normal loo with a soft closed seat. Now the difference is, of course, that this one has this reservoir at the back, so this plumbs straight in to the feed running to your toilet. It has some manual controls here. There's like a lady function and a, a bum function, so I guess that's like a front wash or a rear wash, and there's a stop button there. But there's also this receiver here because it has an infrared wall-mounted control panel that just takes a couple of AA batteries. Um, the other thing that I need to install is power. Now this model, interestingly, has come with a European um, two-pin plug on it. Now that's no good in the UK, but what I plan to do is install this inside the vanity unit of the sink unit in the ensuite I'm fitting this into. So I'm going to run power there and just connect this up so I have, um, you know, a nice safe uh, spur socket and I'm going to put a, a fused switch on the outside of the bathroom so I can switch it on and off remotely. Now I've looked into this, I've spoken to an electrician, this is the way to install an appliance in a bathroom. Um, okay, so let's get that out of the way and have a look at what else is in the box. So this is the remote control unit. This is going to be pretty awesome. Oh yeah. So some of them, you can spend 1,500 pounds on one of these. Uh, this was a few hundred. Um, it's it's no, nothing like what you can spend, but check that out. So you can see here, you've got wash, which is a normal bum wash, basically. You've got a ladies' bidet, which is obviously for a front wash, a stop button, an intensive button. Now this one makes me laugh. You do not want to touch this one lightly. That they describe as a turbo wash or enema. I mean... <laughs> That, that one's pretty extreme, or there's a child one, which is obviously a, a very gentle wash. You've got a pulse function, so it will, yeah, kind of, I think it puts 60% air bubbles into it and, uh, and does that. It's got a nozzle cleaning function. Um, you can adjust the temperature of the seat, so you have a warm seat. You can even adjust the position of the spray as it sprays your bum. Uh, and then it's got a dryer function, so it will blow dry your bum once you're, once you're washed, some sort of energy saving, and you can adjust the water temperature. Um, so it does, it does all sorts of crazy stuff, and uh, I'm sure uh, my family and guests alike will find much amusement in playing with these controls. There is an English user guide and ins installation manual, which is always good. Um, oh, there is something else in here. Yeah, ah, this is the, this is the plumbing kit. So, this is quite interesting. So you can see there you've got a flexible steel braided hose which attaches to your existing loo inlet using the, this T uh, adapter that they've got there. And it looks like this is how this potentially fits on to your existing holes in, in the ceramic on your, your loo for the seat to actually attach firmly. 
And I think the way this thing is designed, there's a quick release function, so you can remove the whole seat if you want to, to give it a really thorough clean. Um, my plan is just to really be careful with this thing and look after it. Um, we've got four loos uh, across our property and there's only gonna be one that's got this thing in, so we'll, we'll keep this probably for grown-ups only and, uh, and really look after it. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is run power from uh, the, the bedroom next door to the ensuite into the bathroom. Now, I'm not gonna show you too much of that because that depends on your specific installation. The, my plan is just to use one of these junction boxes and uh, to, 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 to split into, go under the floorboards, basically lift back the carpet, lift a couple of floorboards, take an existing feed to one of the plug sockets, tap into that, take a single line out of it, a single, um, I'm gonna use some 2.5 mil uh, twin and earth cable, and I'm gonna run that then to an external switch of the bathroom, which is just gonna be a fused switch with probably an LED on it. And then of course, inside the bathroom itself, in the, in the most hidden location I can find, probably inside the vanity unit of the sink, I'll install this. And then I'm gonna chop that cable with the Euro plug on it, and that will run straight out of here, straight to the loo. And it should be a really nice, tidy finish. And um, yeah, looking forward to getting it done. Okay, so this is the ensuite that I'm going to install this washlet toilet seat. Um, you'll have to excuse the banging that, that's going on in the background at the moment. We're having some building work done, but hopefully you can still hear me okay. Now, I've removed our original manual toilet seat, and um, uh, this is the first thing to place this bracket. Now, when I got this out of the box, I thought, oh, that's way too narrow. But actually, this is a standard UK toilet. Um, and you can see it lines up quite nicely there. Um, these are a little adjustable bars that slide backwards and forwards and kind of lock into position. And you get these little, um, these things that go in and as you tighten them in, it squashes this rubber and forms a tight seal inside these porcelain holes in the toilet. So they, go, they pop in there, you push them in, and then tighten it, and that's how you fix that bracket. So that's, that's what I'm gonna do in just a second. Now, before I do that, I have actually gone ahead and um, started working on some of the plumbing. Now, again, the reason I haven't featured all of this is because it's gonna be different for every single installation. But the simple fact is you've got this plastic connector that attaches to the seat itself, and this flexible braided hose, which goes into a T-piece. So you can see at the back of the toilet here, um, every toilet in our household certainly has this little white threaded bar hanging out the bottom of the loo. So the T-piece simply screws in between that and the water connection that you have coming into the toilet normally. It just literally branches in. Now for me this was a bit of a faff because I had to cut back this pipe and because it was on the bend I had to cut it at the other end as well. It took me well, yeah, probably a couple of hours of faffing around to get that sorted, um, but it's in there now. It's, it's not dripping or anything. It's a good seal. Um, so that's the water side all complete. So outside of the on switch, I fitted this fused spur switch with a little LED or a neon uh, light on it. So I know that it's on. In fairness, I'll never switch this thing off. It will always be on, but it's just good practice to have something outside of the wet zone where you can turn it on and off remotely. So that's, that's then running power into the vanity unit. So you can see the loose here, and this is the little vanity unit beneath the sink that's right next door to it. And what I've done, it's not very pretty in here, it's the back of a vanity unit, is there's the spur running from that outside switch. Now, that's another fused spur. It really doesn't need to be um, because the fuse is in the external switch. That's simply one that I had in my shed, so I thought I might as well use it and well, two fuses in line is never gonna hurt. So I'm gonna use that and take the flex directly from the electric seat, which will then go down this vanity unit, pop out of the bottom here. I've already drilled a small hole and I'm gonna run some trunking just above my skirting uh, all the way across and then a hole from that so the wire comes up this side. So it's worth knowing that the wire's on this side of the toilet seat fitted, so right as you look at the toilet, and the water inlet is on the left. Now it's worth noting with these, I've put this one in already. I thought, oh, well, I'll take the screw out and push it in. And of course, by doing that, all it does is it gets fat and it doesn't go in the hole. Actually, I tried screwing it, reverse screwing it and pulling it down, that works. But at the same time, just a few turns of the thread and a push, oh, it's a tight fit, but it does go in and it goes in really nice and flush. So with that in position, I can now place this. Now there's a very clear arrow on this 
um, plastic board that, that shows you the direction in which to place it. Right, well I just tried to install the toilet seat and uh, discovered very quickly that the little arrow on this plastic plate needs to be facing away from the, from the loo bowl, not towards. I had that wrong, which is really annoying. It's a good job you're watching this video if you're getting one because there is no indication in this uh, instructions whatsoever that the arrow should be facing away from the bowl. Anyway, never mind, I've worked it out and now you've watched this, you've worked it out. So, let's slide this on. Well, let's hopefully slide this on. It should just catch. There we go. Did you hear that click? So now you position it where you want it. Okay, so that's installed. Because that pipe was tight that side, what I'm gonna do is install it very slightly off center, only by three or four mil, just so I know I've got clearance on that door. So, on it goes hopefully. Wait for the click. There we go. So this has got a rubber washer built in, so you don't need to worry about an additional washer there. That just goes on finger tight, really. You certainly wouldn't use a wrench to nip that off. Okay, so water's plumbed in. I've also run electric with a bit of trunking, drilled a little hole in the trunking around the back to keep it neat and tidy, put it just above the skirting. And now, you can see um, what I've done is inside, I've removed the uh, bit of plastic blue tape that was there guarding the arm. Um, I turned on the water, turned on the power, and it went through like a, a startup procedure. Should have probably recorded that, but, but it doesn't do much. It made a beep and did some stuff. Um, last thing now is just to install the remote control pad on the wall. Um, and once that's done, um, what I'll do is put some cling film over the top and uh, show you how it works rather than uh, my expression when I press the buttons, which uh, probably isn't as, as useful to you. Um, but it's interesting to see that they've got a remote control receiver on both sides. So wherever you mount the remote control in your bathroom, it should work. So this remote control does come with a sticky pad. Um, so I've obviously got a level using the sticky pad. I've put in one screw. I'm not even bothering with the rule plug. These are just drywall screws that will just hold it in position. And I think above the loo roll, not that you'll need loo roll anymore in theory, I can't believe that. So there we go, that's that pad. And then the remote just, just mounts on the top like that. Right, it's that magic time of the first test. What I've done is the UV light is on. I've put some cling film so we can see how this thing works. Here's my little control panel on the wall. I've disabled the seat sensor. So normally this thing won't turn on unless you sit on it, right? So I've disabled that for this demonstration. So let's just hit wash. Here we go, can you see this? Wow. That's quite a jet but it's nice warm water. Oh no, this is all going wrong. Now in theory, it will give me a blow dry. And so you've got adjustments of position. So you can see I can adjust the position and, in and indeed the intensity. And there's something called pulse. See what pulse does. So pulses literally increasing and dropping the jet. Got the seat temperature on maximum, that's warming up nicely. So now in theory it should blow dry. Or maybe you have to hit dry. Again. Oh okay, so seat temperature's on full. Dry only has one, one setting, I think. You can adjust the power, but that is hot. I mean, yeah, you might want to turn this down actually using this in practice. But you can see it's drying out the cling film, so in theory it should dry your bum, right? So yeah, you get the idea of it. There, there, there's loads of stuff. There's, well, should we press the intensive button? Let's see what that's like. So I'm just gonna press stop now to stop that operation. Let's go intensive. Let's see what this does. When it rips a hole through the cling film, I don't think it will. Oh, 
I think you'd feel that. I think you'd feel that. Let me just adjust the position again. So you could adjust the position remotely on the wall and this thing jets. A warm jet. Wow. We're going to press stop. So you get the idea. That is the Splashlet toilet bidet system, which, yeah, I will, uh, I haven't obviously even used it myself yet, but, uh, oh, there we go, and I'm using toilet roll to wipe up, but obviously you wouldn't need to do this normally because it wouldn't normally have a load of wet cling film hanging on there. It would just be, uh, it would just be you, right? And you get up and walk away. I, I think I'll still keep a loo roll there anyway, just in case, but um, yeah, it is installed. And it's pretty awesome. So if you want a simple upgrade to your <laughs> daily routine, uh, something like this in your life, then yes, plan, you know, a few hours over a weekend. And for a few hundred quid, you can do exactly the same. I hope you enjoyed it. And thanks as always for watching.